For all its shortcomings and wasted opportunities, Jurassic World Dominion deserves credit for introducing many new dinosaurs to the general public. Our two new stars were the Pterosaurus and the Giganotosaurus. The former I've commemorated in my GR Toys review, and so for the latter, we have this. Now, this is one of the artistic models, Giganotosaurus, and I'm a little late with this. Again, very pleasing presentation, even the elegant, beautiful writing here. I like these in-scale figures to give you an idea of size. So, let's open it. Now inside, you get a nice Wham logo on sandpaper. Instructions for trickier steps. And the fact sheet. Now this time, there are seven plates from A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. If you're not familiar with these wood kits, you basically join parts with the same numbers together. And also one thing that might be useful is a needle file set, even though you don't need it, but it'd be faster. And if you don't want to ruin this nice square. Another thing that could help are these discs from the Delapse T-Rex, or use other plastic discs for pressing pieces together. Oh, actually, you do get them here, uh, so that might be a new and welcome inclusion with all the newer models. Very useful. I just really like the colour in the edges of all the pieces here. Now, I'll just give you a quick overview of the process. This one here will go into this one here. And likewise, the other side, the ones go together. And joining these two pieces will be this. So this goes into this hole. And on one side, B23, which goes with 23 on plate B. And C19 will go with piece 19 on plate C, and so on. Now here you see these projections 19 and 20. When they're all joined together, they go with C19, and C20, the cervical ribs. I just really like that satisfying snap. And there, already looking very nice. And next you see here the 2 to 12. They correspond to these square holes here for the ribs. Uh, C2 is here as you can see. Note that for some of the ribs, there's a step configuration with a definite up and down rib. So check first before you attach. Well, notice that this little projection here on both ribs A4 and B4, which say L2 and R2, each will later attach to a humerus. And so here's the rib cage forming up very nicely.
Now remember that little projection here, which goes to L2 over here. Well, from here, L1 will attach to this peg here on the scapular coracoid, which will in turn support the gastralia. And likewise, these go with the claws. Now from experience, I can tell you it's much easier to assemble the appendages first before attaching them to the axial skeleton. And next, C14 all the way to 21. Now these will go with these vertebral half bodies here. Again, it's easier to fix these to the tail first before attaching the tail to the body. And also note here, 25 and 24, with the 24 on this bracket here, and 25 on this bracket. So I just want to quickly show you how clever this thing is. Um, you have a piece like this, uh, which you insert here on either side. And then what happens is that um, you get a build-up of three-dimensionality. So that together, they create the effect of vertebral bodies. Really nice. And then the arm here. Just the form is just so pleasing. Um, these two together remind me of those Dino Kairos arm photos. And then here, the left, um, right. And you'll end up with something like this. Now note this hole. Well, that supports two here. And then this peg goes in there. And this other end is going to fit near the pelvis. Now here on the proximal tail, you see the 22. Well, that's this piece here. And C7. Well, that goes with part 7 on C on the ilium here. Likewise, I'm going to build up the lower limbs first uh, before attaching to the axial skeleton. Now this all is really straightforward and one their artistic models really have user design in mind. Even the template itself helps you visualize the flow of pieces, and that's so ergonomic. You see the F3 hole here? Well, that will support the other end of the gastralia. So it all ties together very nicely. And here already building up the three-dimensionality. And just looking at this one area is really nice. Now before attaching this, there's this piece here which goes into here. Now see how it clamps the two halves together while forming a thicker square peg? Well, that's what this piece will fit onto. See how it says AB? which tells you it's holding both parts A and B in here. So that's going to go here first, before attaching the other half of the pelvis and the leg. And speaking of legs, again, just the process is really easy to visualize. Now I'm really happy they made this change here. Now you see the number here, R17, is now on the main part of the bone instead of this square that you push out. Now from one here, you see this curved arrow? Well, that means it attaches to this bone, but on the other side, like this. I'm just really impressed how clearly the process flow is shown. And this piece again will go on the other side, and likewise here. And once again, these are really easy to do.
Alright, and finally, always the most exciting part, here is the complete skeleton. Now this 65cm or 25.5 inch model is 1 to 20 of scale. Oh, this is simpler than the Deluxe T-Rex, but the skull still looks detailed, including the sclerotic rings. The jaw can articulate, and the always nice cervical ribs. I'll just look at the colour of that wood. And from here, you can see how width is built up of many layers. And here, I know I may sound a little weird, but things like the formation of the limbs uh, with the shoulder girdle really make me happy. Just how they look with the ribs and how the effect of the gastralia is created. So much thought went into the design here. I just have to look at those arms again and those claws. Again, the build-up of the shin volume and the femoral girth. Oh, and also the scapular coracoids and focula. All these details. Now I've raved on about the three-dimensionality of these models and the different components to create all the elements. Like here in the transverse processes, the neural spines, and the bodies of the vertebrae. Now let's bring in the also 1 to 20 of scale Deluxe T-Rex. Again, look at the curve of this thing. And the complexity of the skull. And yet, although the Giganotosaurus is less complex, I think you can see it looks no less cool, and they look really good together. It's easier to build, and would be a good model to start with if you've never done this before, but you still want a formidable large predator. Again, I'm absolutely delighted. I'm just seeing how many flat pieces can create volume and capture the essence of a skeleton. It's just incredible. Oh, I almost forgot. There was another standout in Jurassic World Dominion, the Quetzalcoatlus. Now, this, as well as the Therizinosaurus, are also available as models from Wonder Artistic Models, so check them out in the links below. Now, building something like this combines my love of dinosaur anatomy with woodkit construction. I think that Simon, the owner of Wonder Artistic Models, really chose his brand name well, because once again, they deliver an anatomically pleasing design that's not just wonderful, but incredibly artistic as well. Alright, that's it from me for now, and I'll see you soon with another review.